Welcome to the AP Physics video lecture on Unit 7, Torque and Rotational Motion. This session is on torque. Let's discover what torque is. Right now, this balance beam is in equilibrium because all the forces cancel each other out. You can tell visually because this balance beam is horizontally. The scenario, a mass is now placed on one side of the balance beam. Notice that the mass is being placed on the right-hand side and it's causing that balance beam to no longer be in equilibrium. So the question is, why does the balance beam turn to one side? Why doesn't the balance beam move as a whole object downwards? The reason for that is that the force of gravity that the five kilogram object is applying downwards, that force of gravity is acting away from the center of mass of the balance beam. The fact that it is a distance away in the image there, you see it is four units away from the center and it's causing the object to turn because the force of gravity is pulling it down. That rotation of clockwise is because of, because of the force of gravity pulling it down on the right hand side of the balance beam. This leads us up to understanding what torque is. Torque is the rotational equivalent to force. Net torque will cause an object to rotate with an angular acceleration, like in our last problem. That object, the five kilogram fire distinguisher, is applying a angular acceleration to the balance beam because it causes it to accelerate in a circular direction. Therefore, it has an angular acceleration. All rotational motion has an axis of rotation. A torque must be defined about an axis of rotation. That axis of rotation is the pivot point or the center. In this image of the ranch, the hook next to the pipe is where the pivot point is because that is how everything is turning. The equation for torque is this symbol. In Greek, we call that rho. That equals to r perpendicular to the force. R stands for the radius and F stands for the force. The size of the torque, rho, depends on a couple of things. One, the size of the force, F, that is applied. Two, the perpendicular distance, which is R perpendicular, that's what that subscript symbol is, from the axis of rotation, which depends both on the direction of the force plus its physical distance from the axis of rotation. Sometimes you might not see the perpendicular sign, so they just attach the sine theta. So rho is equal to RF sine theta. The unit for torque is Newton meter. That Newton comes from the force, the meter comes from the radius. That's why rho torque is considered a Newton meter. So the question here, different mass are placed on a balance beam at the same spot. Which object will cause the most torque on the balance beam? Here you would see that the trash can placed at the five is causing the balance beam to turn differently than the fire extinguisher, which is at five kilograms. Notice at 10 kilograms, it turns quicker. It has a larger angular acceleration, but the five kilogram causes a smaller angular acceleration. So you would say that the trash can with a mass of 10 kilograms will cause more torque than the five kilogram object when placed at the same spot because the 10 kilogram will apply a 100 Newton force downwards. Basically 10, new um, 10 kilograms times 10 for the gravitational field. Downwards where the five kilograms will apply a 50 Newton force downwards. Let's take a look at the net torque now being zero. The scenario here is that a five kilogram object is placed four meters to the right away from the pivot point, And we know this will cause a torque to occur. You see the balance beam turning clockwise. I would like you to calculate the value and the direction of this torque. The answer, torque equals to R perpendicular times force. The force here is force gravity, and I get force gravity as 50 newtons, five kilograms times 10, which is the G. The R perpendicular is four meters away, 
So 4 meters times 50 newtons, the rho or the torque is 200 newton meter. And the direction here is clockwise because it's going to the right. Now, the scenario. Now there is a 10 kilogram object. Where should the 10 kilogram object be placed in the balance beam to balance it out? Because right now we know that there is a torque of 200 newtons counterclockwise. Well, we know that the answer should be the net torque is going to be the torque that is clockwise minus the torque that is counterclockwise. Because balance means when the net torque is equal to zero in equilibrium. So if, we've, if we set it equal to zero and, and isolate it, we can see that the torque in the clockwise rotation has to be equal to the counterclockwise torque for it to be balanced. So here, I placed that 10 kilogram object at the left at a value of two. Notice now the balance beam is balanced. Let's take a look at the calculation. We know that on the fire extinguisher, the torque is equal to 200 newtons clockwise. So likewise, the counterclockwise should be equal to 200. Right now, we have the R, which is the distance, times the force of gravity on the trash can, which is 100 newtons, 10 kilograms times 10 Gs. That gets me 100 newtons. Now divide by 100 to both sides, I get the R is equal to 2 meters. Please understand that this is to the left-hand side, so it can cause the counterclockwise motion. So here, you should see that it is now balanced. Let's take at a look at the relationship between the distance and the force. So here's the scenario. Ian is wondering what is the easiest way to open a door, pushing near the hinge. The hinge is right here where the door turns or pushing at the doorknob, which is right here at FA. Easy means that the least amount of force uh, for the door to swing open. So the question, you would use a graph to determine which one will require less force. Which what should be the x-axis be, what should the y-axis be, and what should you be looking for? We know that the equation for torque is equal to r perpendicular to f. Divide r perpendicular to both sides, you see that f is equal to torque, which is rho, divided by the r. This should look like your slope equation. You should notice that force is the slope of the torque versus radius graph. The top of the fraction is torque, so that goes into the y-axis. On the bottom, it is the radius, which should go on the x-axis. I label some values here. Now I can graph. I see that it will require less force to push the door with the same amount of torque when the radius is small. So here, I graphed it linearly. So if the radius is uh, if the radius here is um, 1, the torque that it's going to be applied is 2 newtons. But if the radius is greater, like 3, you have to apply 6 um, newton meters of torque. This is how you get the same amount of force. Okay. If you want less, you would have to do the FB. The FB is smaller and you see that you will um, you can you're applying less torque to the door to swing it open all right next question what happens to the torque if the radius is doubled and the force stays the same well the torque will double as well you could take a look here by multiplying the equation here rho is equal to RF. The torque if the radius is double, so we put 2R here, and the force stays the same. So if this goes up by 2, torque also has to double by 2. Okay, that's the only way it works. What happens to the torque if the force is half and the radius stays the same? So here, torque is equal to RF. The F here now has 1 half. For it to be 1 half, the Rho, which is torque, also has to be one half. So the torque is also half as well. 
So what sort of relationship does the radius and the force have with the torque? You would say it has the direct linear relationship because technically they're all both on top of the fraction and they all have to the power of one. That is why it's a direct linear relationship. We have two problems here. The top problem, we are looking at what is the net torque in this situation. If you take a look at this image, there are several torques that are being applied to this object. The black dot here, this is going to be considered the hinge, or you can think about this as the pivot point. Okay, This is when x is basically equal to 0. I want you to notice, this is the convention. If you go clockwise, that is considered to be negative. And if you go counterclockwise, it is considered to be positive. That is just the direction. So when we set this up, the torque net is equal to the sum of all the torques. So there are four total torques in total because there are four different forces at four different distances. The first one is 20 newtons downwards. Okay. So we call this, uh, this is torque one. So this is negative, negative um, 200 newtons, and the distance here, it's r is equal to 0 0.5. And I made this negative because it's going down. So that is torque 1. This is torque 2. It is negative 100 newtons, and the r here is going to be 1 because it's 2 of the 0 0.5s. Um, force 3, that's going to be torque 3. That's going to be positive, and the radius here is going to be at 1.5. That's the third torque, and this is torque 4. The force here is positive, 25, and the radius here is going to be at 2. Plug in the values, you get the value of negative 75 newton meter, but we notice that negative is your uh, clockwise, so this should be clockwise. So negative was going down. So it should have been clockwise, OK? That makes sense because there's more forces here that is being applied and is it um, closer to here. Next, the question asked, uh, how would this system change from scenario 1 to scenario 2? Scenario 1, notice that this distance here from the cradle all the way to the end, R, A, I, I can just label that RA, and right here, RB, notice that RA is equal to RB. The objects here are the same mass. Same mass. Because they are the same mass, they will exert the same force FG downwards. Okay? So this is in equilibrium. Now, the object moves. Okay, there's a new um, RA. So the new RA, the new RA is equal to 0 0.5, and the new RB is equal to 0 0.25. One of them has to be negative. Okay, one of them has to be negative. All right. So I did. So I know that scenario one is torque net equals to zero. The object is in equilibrium. Scenario two, there's two torques. Torque one and torque two. The first one uh, is this one because it's fg minus negative uh negative x because it's to the left and the other one this is going to be torque 2 fg to the x because that's to the right hand side plug in the values okay um how i'm getting the 10 this is the one kilogram times 10 uh the force of gravity that's how i get the force of uh weight which is 10 here right that's the radius, plugging that in. The other one has the same weight force, which is 10 newtons, times the distance, which is 0 0.5. Notice the value here is 2.5. So it is positive, OK? That means the object is going to go clock. It should go, no, no, no. I set this convention. So it is positive, so it's it should go counter clockwise okay that's positive torque it's going to go counterclockwise yes and the direction notice it is a positive value 
so it is increasing the angular speed is increasing the reason why the angular speed is increasing is because there is an angular acceleration there's an angular acceleration because the object is turning it there's going to be, to be an acceleration all right so there you go all right please remember this is the convention clockwise torque is negative counterclockwise the torque is positive all right but you could define it however you want this is the basic default convention all right so there you go that is everything about torque that you need to know